So guy thread function callback is nothing but it is a function which the new thread will going to execute, right? Such type of functions have a fixed prototype and the prototype should be should be that that these function must return void star and the argument to this function is also void star, right? So you can see that the prototype of thread function callbacks is very generic, right? So as soon as the child thread starts, the child thread invokes this function, right? So in other words, this function will be executed in the context of a child thread, right? Now our new thread must do some useful work or maybe not useful, but our new thread must do some work. So what I will going to do is that I will simply extract the argument which was passed to our new thread. So what was the argument which was passed? The argument was nothing but the address of this input string, right? So whatever memory you passed as the last argument to the pthread create function, the address of that memory will be available as an argument to this thread function callback, right? So you simply typecast it into the char star, right? And now what I will going to do is that I will going to create an infinite loop and inside that loop I will going to just print this string, right? And I will going to use sleep one so that our new thread take a rest of one second. Now in this hello world program though it is very simple and basic but we will going to but we will going to discuss several basic points regarding multi-threading. So now let me compile this hello world program. The instruction to compile a multi multi-threaded program is written at the top of the file. So what you are going to do is that simply you can copy paste these lines, right? And note that for a multi-threaded program you need to link your executable with the pthread library. So to specify the pthread library, you can simply write minus lpthread, right? And if you just press enter, the hello world executable will be created. And the expectation is that, that the main thread should get paused, right? Here. And the child thread must run in this infinite loop. And every time the child thread must print this input string. So you can see the same thing is happening, right? So the child thread is running and it is printing the input string after every one second on the screen. In other words, the child thread is doing its job. Whereas the main thread is halt at the line number 77, right? If we remove this line number 77, and if you execute this program again, after compiling of course, then you will see that nothing happens, right? Even before your child thread took a birth and start its life, your main thread had terminated. And if your main thread terminates, then all the child threads in the program gets terminated automatically, right? So in other words, by removing this pause call from the function, we have hardly given any chance to the child thread to take a birth and live its life. I will show you shortly in this section that how you can allow your main thread to terminate while having your child thread alive. So now we will going to analyze this hello world multi-threaded program from various aspects and understand certain points regarding multi-threading in the next couple of lecture videos.